Hello, and welcome to the Georgia State University Library Instruction Webinar for English 1101. My name is Karen Doster Greenleaf, and I am the Student Success Librarian for Georgia State University Libraries. Let's get started. In this class, you've been instructed to write a research paper on a topic of your choice. This will require you to do some research to support your ideas. To help you complete this assignment, in this webinar, I will guide you through the research process and how it can be applied to your own assignment, tips for evaluating information, and useful GSU library databases to locate information to support your ideas. Before we continue, open a web browser tab and go to library.gsu.edu. Working on a research assignment can sometimes feel overwhelming. Students are often concerned that they need to find that one perfect article, but research is a process that requires a little digging to find exactly what you're looking for, which will likely be more than just one source or article. The process is not a straight line and will take some critical thinking to put all the pieces together. The process starts with your initial topic. This often begins with something very broad, such as adoption or renewable energy. Once you have your starting point, you can begin to explore or brainstorm your topic and develop some initial ideas on what you would like to narrow it to. This will then lead to a more focused research idea and how you will frame your paper. To find information to support this idea, you will need to determine useful search terms. These terms will help you find the most relevant information in the databases. It may be helpful to remember that in each stage of the research process, our aim is to continue to narrow our focus. Starting with our broad, large starting topic, building up by exploring or brainstorming our topic to identify possible ideas we could focus our, idea, our research statement or question to, and finally developing a focused research question or statement. To assist you through this process, we have created a research map that will break down each step. In the description section of this video, there is a link you can use to access a copy of the research map. We will begin by identifying your starting topic. For your assignment, you can choose any topic that interests you. But what can you do if you don't have a topic in mind? Here are some suggestions. You could start by going to the websites of the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, the BBC, or other news sources. You could see what people are talking about on social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. You could talk to your instructor about possible topic ideas. Or you could ask a librarian who could point you to useful tools like Procon.org. Now let's take time to talk about the explore or brainstorm part of the process. Once you have picked your topic, you can then start to explore different things about it. To help brainstorm a topic, it may be useful to ask yourself these questions. Who, what, where, and why about the topic? The who refers to specific groups that are impacted or affected by your topic. For example, teenagers, men, residents of a specific state, a company, or organization. The what refers to the impact or aspect of the topic that you could focus on. Does your topic have an impact on any of these groups? Is there a specific aspect about your topic you want to focus on? Where? Is your topic unique in a particular part of the world or country? This question may or may not be helpful for your topic. And finally, why? 
What is important about your topic? Why do you want to learn more about it? What is the significance of this topic to you or your reader? Each of these questions will help you explore different aspects of your topic and make it easier for you to focus and frame your research idea. Keeping these questions in mind, Google your topic. What results do you find? What does Wikipedia or online news sources say about the topic? Are there any relevant websites? Let's look at an example. What would this look like in practice? Using the starting topic student loan debt, what are some groups of people that are affected by this topic? Pulling from what I found on Wikipedia and other relevant news, news sources online, here are some ideas that I came up with. College students, universities, banks, federal government, or parents. Now the what. What impact does this topic have on these various groups? Or what are specific aspects about this group I could focus on? I was able to identify tuition rates, bankruptcy, loan defaults, student loan forgiveness programs, and college selection. Where? You could focus on just the United States, or possibly compare the U.S. to countries that provide free college, such as Norway or Germany. And finally, why? Why do we want to learn more about this topic? Why is it important? Some ideas that I identified include the impact student loan debt has on creating delayed life purchases for graduates, like home buying, retirement, or starting a business. There's also financial freedom or mental health. It's important to remember during this part of the process that there is no right answer. You're just exploring different ways you could focus your topic. Let's practice. At this time, I encourage you to pause the video and complete the exploration section on your research map. You can either print out a copy of the research map or create the research map in a notebook. Begin by identifying a topic. Next, brainstorm your topic by Googling or going to Wikipedia or looking in news sources to learn more about it. Once you've had the time to read a little bit about your topic, begin to answer the questions who, what, where, and why about your topic to identify different ideas you could focus on. Remember, there isn't one right answer for this. Take the time to explore your topic. Now we're going to discuss how you can begin to focus your topic. Now that you've had a chance to explore and learn a little bit more about your topic, you can begin to decide what you want to research and write about. You may find it helpful to cross out ideas you don't find very interesting. For example, based on the ideas that I initially came up with during the brainstorming part of the process, I've identified that there are several topics that are ideas that I don't find very interesting. So I've decided to cross out banks, federal government, and parents from the who section, bankruptcy and loan defaults from the what section, I'd like to just focus on the United States, so I've crossed out Norway and Germany. And finally, for the why, I'd like to focus on just delayed life purchases or mental health, so I've crossed out financial freedom. Once you have focused your research idea, you can start to think of specific topic area, you can start to think of specific research ideas. For example, now we focus the topic to student loan debt to issues relating to U.S. college students and universities in regard to student loan forgiveness programs and college selection in relationship to delayed life purchases or mental health. Given our focus, possible research ideas could be student loan forgiveness programs help college graduates make life purchases sooner 
or does student loan debt negatively affect college graduates' mental health? A research idea can be framed as either a question or a statement. Let's practice. At this time, I encourage you to pause the video and complete the research idea section on your own research map. Using your copy of the research map or your research map in your notebook, begin by crossing out ideas that do not interest you in the brainstorm section. This will help you to focus your topic. Once you've done so, write down one or two possible research ideas. Remember, you can always go back and modify your topic. Now let's talk about search terms. While you will likely start your search with key concepts from your research idea, it's good to also think about synonyms and related words to these concepts. What are synonyms and related terms in regards to search terms? Synonyms are words that mean the same as major concept words. Related search terms are words that don't mean the same thing, but might be related or closely connected. Depending on the audience of the information or who the creator is, certain terms may be used over others. This is why it's important to consider all possible vocabulary options when determining the most useful search terms. For example, the word currency will most likely be used in a business academic journal article about the topic of money versus more common terms like cash or moolah. If you need help thinking of synonyms, I recommend using thesaurus, like thesaurus.com. But let's see what search terms we can come up with for some of our key concepts. For university, I was able to identify college, graduate, or maybe you'd like to identify a specific university, like Georgia State University. For mental health, I identified well-being, therapy, or maybe a particular aspect of mental health, such as depression. For debt, I identified credit, interest rate, and loans. These are all examples of synonyms or related terms that I could use for these key concepts. Let's practice. At this time, I encourage you to pause the video and complete the search terms section on your research map. On the copy of the research map, select three concepts as your beginning search terms. Try to think of additional synonyms and related terms to expand your search strategy. Remember, you can always go back and add new search terms to your map. Next, let's talk about evaluating the information you'll use to support your research ideas. Not all information will be useful or fit your research needs. Here are some things to consider when selecting an information source to use for your research paper. Timeliness. Does the information need to be up to date as possible? It's important to be sure that the date of the information meets the topic. For example, for subjects like current events or topics that are related to the STEM field. Expertise. Who created the information? What authority do they have to be writing about the topic? Accuracy. Check the information against other websites. Does the information seem legitimate? And finally, matter. Does the information match your topic? Is it addressing what you need to learn more about? A source may be authoritative, accurate, current, and unbiased, but it still may not be right for your research. We are now going to talk about what information sources will be a best fit for this assignment. 
Here are a list of resources that I recommend for an English 1101 research assignment. Once you have decided on your focus research idea and identified useful search terms, you can begin searching for information to support your paper. The GSU Library has a large selection of databases that contain a wide coverage of information. So from the library's homepage, I would recommend the Discover tool, the database issues and controversies, news and newspapers, or ProQuest Research Library. We're now going to go to the library's website, library.gsu.edu, to run through a few practice searches, searches. We'll begin in the library's Discover tool and then cover the two specific databases, issues and controversies, and news and newspapers. Welcome to the Georgia State University Library's website. For today's webinar, we will be focusing on the Search Within box here, and the list of databases by name located here. Discover can be a great resource as it looks through multiple databases that the library has access to. We're going to begin by starting with our student loan debt topic, but adding an additional search term, mental health, that focuses our research idea and click search. On the results page on the, from the Discover tool, you'll see that there's a section called Refine Results. Oftentimes, instructors may have specific qualifications for the resources you will be using. For example, your instructor may say that they want you to use a scholarly peer-reviewed journal article. If this is the case, under the Refine Results section, you'll see that there's an option to limit your results to scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles. By clicking the box next to this option, the Discover tool will automatically change your results to show you articles pertaining to your topic, but are just scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles. Your instructor may also tell you that the information has to be published within a particular time frame. If this is the case, you can go to the Limit To option called Publication Date. I find it easiest to enter in a specific date instead of using the slider. For example, your instructor might say that the information could be no older than 10 years. So I'm going to change the first date to 2010 and keep the 2020 end date and hit enter. Again, Discover will automatically generate new results based off of these limiters. And now you can begin to scroll through and look at the results pertaining to your topic that meet the criteria your instructor has set regarding scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles and publication date. Looking at the results, I noticed that sick of our loans, student borrowing, and the mental health of young adults in the United States addresses several things that I would like to focus my research paper on. So I'm going to click on the link to learn more about this article. The link takes us to the article record that will provide us with useful information and tools to help with the research process. The first is an abstract. The abstract will give you a summary of the article to help you identify whether or not it will be useful for your research needs. After reading the abstract, if the article still seems promising, 
you can go up to the full text link. This may be listed as a linked full text, a PDF full text, or an HTML full text. Finally, there are several tools located within the article that will help the research and searching process. For example, you can upload the article to your Google Drive or email it to yourself. Research papers also require students to have a works cited or reference page. The citation tool will help you create your citation. By clicking on the link for cite, you'll see that a box will appear that says citation format. There are several different citation formats listed within the Discover tool. You will need to scroll down until you find the correct one for your class. So for example, we will scroll down until we find MLA. Here, you can now copy and paste the citation and put it into a Word document. We do recommend that all students proofread their citations just like they proofread the rest of their paper. You can either talk to your instructor or a librarian if you have any questions. I am now going to exit out of the citation format box and go back to our results page by clicking on the results list link. Discover can be a great resource for many students, but it's just one of many offered through GSU University Libraries. So I'm going to go back to the Georgia State University Library homepage. Now for this assignment or future assignment, you may need to access a specific or specialized database. If that is the case, you can search for a database by its title or by a specialized subject. You would use the databases by name if you are looking for a database by its title, or you can select a particular subject from the databases by subject list. Since there are specific databases I recommend for this assignment, we will focus on the databases by name selection option. The first database we're going to access is called Issues and Controversies. To access this resource, we're going to click on I from the alphabet list. On the next page, you'll scroll down until you see the link for the database issues and controversies. You'll click on the link and it will take you to the database. You may be asked to log in to the database using your GSU username and password. This is the same information you use to log into iCollege. Issues and Controversies is a great database to start with if you are looking for a topic, narrowing a topic, researching a controversial topic, or writing an argumentative or position paper. There are two ways to navigate this database. You can either browse from a curated list of current topics or search for a specific topic. Let's start by browsing by topics. On the home page, you'll see a list of hundreds of topics organized by subject or alphabetically. To learn more about any of these topics, you just need to click on the link of the topic that interests you the most. I'm going to click on the topic College Tuition Costs because it most closely relates to our starting topic, Student Loan Debt. Here you can see a complete list of articles on this topic. This will include an overview of the topic that will explain what makes it controversial and a list of pro and con articles that focuses on a more narrowed aspect of the broader topic. For example, in the entry for college tuition costs, the pro con questions narrow in on specific issues pertaining to, pertaining to the topic, such as are the benefits of a college degree worth the financial cost? To find more research on this topic, click on the question 
and you'll see that the ProCon article entry begins with an introduction for the article for the arguments and against, along with background information and additional support in opposition to the topic. Each position is backed up by evidence and supporting materials. The entry also provides links to primary sources, court cases, summaries, media and media coverage tied to the topic. In the primary source section, you'll find government reports, speeches, congressional testimony, court decisions, and much more. In the court cases section, you'll find companion articles to court cases vital to the topic. Each summarizes the case planning, its background, the legal issues involved, and the court's decisions. In the media section, you'll find original overview videos, debate videos, interviews, and radio programs such as NPR Fresh Air. The infographics resource contains charts, graphs, and maps that can be incorporated into any research project and provides more visual explanation on the topic. In the editorial section, you will find a wide selection of current editorial opinion columns and op-ed articles from major U.S. newspapers. Editorials and op-ed articles provide specific viewpoints on a particular issue and can be very useful if you are writing a persuasive or argumentative paper. In the news section, you will find the very latest breaking news and headlines related to your topic. In this section, you can narrow your search to news articles from the past year, 90 days, the past month, or the past week. The second way to use this database is to search directly for the topic you want to learn more about. At the top of the page, search for your topic by entering it into the search bar. Let's do a search for the topic student debt. On this results page, you'll find many articles on the topic. You can narrow these results on the right-hand side of the screen by selecting a specific article type, such as pro-con articles, special reports, or encyclopedia entries. To access the full text of an article that looks interesting, simply click on the title. You'll notice in this article that there are links to suggested or related articles in various database tools. With the tools, you have the option to print, save, or share the article. There is also a citation tool that will provide the article citation in either MLA or Chicago style. Now that we have covered issues and controversies, I am going to go back to the library's list of databases A to Z and show you how you can access the database news and newspapers. We're going to go back up to the top of the screen where you see the alphabet list and select the letter N. Again, you'll scroll down until you find the name of the database you're looking for. And here we find news and newspapers. Within this database, you can do a search from our basic search to find information in any news source. However, if you are looking to find information from a specific news source, such as the New York Times or the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, you can go to the Advanced Search option. In the Advanced Search option, you would enter in your search terms. leaving the search option anywhere, and then in the box below, enter in the name of the news source you would like to find information from. 
I'm going to type in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Next, I am going to change the Anywhere search option to publication titles. Since we are looking for information specifically from the publication Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Once you have made that change, you can click search. As you were able to do so in Discover, you can also change the publication date of the news articles that you see in your results page by either sliding until you see the correct date range or by entering a specific date range and click update. You'll see that all of our articles are from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution and pertain to our topic in one way or the other. Reviewing the results, I do notice that some of the articles are talking about a particular aspect of the topic that I wanted to explore for my research paper, which were loan forgiveness programs. I'd like to learn a little bit more about these, so I'm going to go back up and change my search terms. It's important to know that you have the option of going and changing, adding, or modifying the search terms that you would like to use to find information on your topic. You'll see here that I am keeping the publication search term Atlanta Journal-Constitution because I would like to continue to find information from this source. Now I am looking at a results page with information pertaining to student loan forgiveness programs from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution that have been published between 2000 and 2019. Once you find an article that you would like to read more about, you can click on the link and it will take you to the full text article. In the article, you will also see an All Options button that you can click that will provide you an opportunity to save the article as a PDF, email it to yourself, upload it to the Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive, or cite the article. It's important to note that the citation tool in News and Newspapers defaults to APA 6th edition. If your instructor requires you to use MLA, you will need to change the citation format from the drop-down menu. You would scroll down until you find MLA 8th edition and select. The system will then generate a new citation in MLA format, where you can copy and paste it into your Word document. Now that we have reviewed news and newspapers, I'm going to go back to the library's homepage. This concludes our webinar. If you have any questions or in need of further assistance, please go to the library.gsu to access our chat and service FAQ. To access our chat, simply click on the Chat with Us tab on the right-hand side. To access our FAQ, click on the link below that says or search for an answer. Thank you.